So in my journey to work this morning, I came across a thing. It looks like an indusit tumble dryer. And like all of these things, of course, what well, the first thing you've got to do is get into it and get those bits out. And it's always the same approach. Basically, if you see a screw, <laughs> unscrew it. If it's got a special attachment, drill it out or try to find the special screw attachment. And that's what we're going to do with this. We're basically just going to unscrew it and see what bits we've got inside. So once you get it to pieces, this is basically what it looks like. It's a big old drum sitting on a plastic bottom with uh, essentially a motor driver to drive this rubber belt and a fan out the back. There's a heating element and it basically just blows hot air across these things while it tumbles. So we've got the pretty case off, now all we need to do is remove these bits and that's a bit easy actually, you just slide it out. Okay, so here's the bottom chassis which is a, just a, basically a big old lump of ABS. And now these machines are essentially really simple. I mean there's a motor here doing all the work and it's got an impeller here, sucks in the air, blows it over the heater, blows that over your clothes while the same motor turns that big old drum we saw. And it does that at a certain temperature for a certain time. That's about it really. Not even the heater's that complicated. Here it is. It's just a roll of heating wire on there and a bit of mica and there's a couple of thermal sensors. So they're stunningly not very complicated devices. Anyway, that's the bottom chassis, which is mostly a big lump of plastic. What we want out of it really is the motor, the capacity of the impeller. So let's pull that to pieces. Okay, so here is the motor with its impeller removed from that case. I also removed the sump pump, incidentally, because I don't know if you remember, we made this thing and we made this thing from one of these. So I'm going to have a look in that and see what's in there. That could be interesting. This is a shaded pole motor, which is no surprise if you think about it, because of course it's a very low torque application, driving some hot air over a rotating drum. Anyway, let's get that motor to pieces. Okay, and that's the inside of a shaded pole motor. So what we've got here is the main coil and the shading coil. And here's the rotor itself with its little aluminium bits there for the induction field, a couple of nice bearings, and the end caps are just these pressed bits of steel. I mean, the whole thing is surprisingly cheaply made, actually. I mean, the thing about these, obviously, is they run for absolutely ages. Like I said, they are low torque. So that's all very interesting. But what we've really got is, of course, this. This is a large steel drum beautifully balanced with a central pivot point right here. So you've got to think to yourself, haven't you? Would this make a rotor? Would this make a wind turbine? Now, I don't really know. So what we're going to do is cut some slices down here to make the blades and then bend them to make a rotor. Okay, so I took my drum and I marked down it a load of lines using a sharpie and angle. Just putting the angle on there and drawing the sharpie down. And now what we're going to do is cut down all those lines with an angle grinder. Okay, so when you cut out all those straight lines, what you need to do is put a little T-cut in across those lines. So you're making like a T-shape top and bottom about a third of the way across and again about a third of the way across, leaving a third attached. Then all you do is bend them out. And the first one's hard to do, but after that it gets a bit easier actually. And you just get yourself in there and give them a bend. They're a bit stiff, then whack them with a hammer of course. And all you do is go around there bending those out to shape. Now, it's supposed to be 36 degrees to the tangent, but when you look at the different rotors all over the place, th there is a bit of variety there, okay? So I don't think it's that crucial what that angle is. But if you bend it out so it looks more or less like a rotor, you're probably going to be more or less okay. The easiest way i found of doing this is to get some of these and get your grips in there and just force it round. It will tear the metal a little bit, but hey ho. And I have to admit, I just judge these by eye. Just bend them out to the angle you want. So when you've done that, this is what you end up with. Now these edges are a bit sharp, so do remember to go over them with a file, otherwise you might get a few owies. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Now, and we're pretty much done here actually. Obviously what you need to do is give it something to rotate on. 
I'm going to give you a close-up of that because it takes a little bit of explanation about how to set that up. Now we're going to use ordinary skater bearings because they're so accessible. They're just all over the place, they're dirt cheap and they're easy to get a hold of. Now you'll notice there's an outer metal ring, an inner metal ring, and then inside of those is a whole load of ball bearings. Each of those rings has a little groove in them so the ball bearings can sit there. Now what you can do with something like this is if you make sure something only rests on that little inner metal ring, then it will continue to turn if this rests on the outer metal ring. Now this is what they do in those um, whirly birds that you see sitting on roofs because this will work just fine as long as it's not too much weight on it so we're talking a few kilograms or so but those whirly birds um, just weigh a few kilograms or so so it's just not a standard way but it is a way of doing this to explain what I mean <coughs> I've got one here this piece of bar is 12 millimeters it's been turned down to 8 millimeters and then there's a cone at the end here. So the 8mm goes through the centre, the cone rests on that inner ring. Now if I rest the entire whirly bird, or in this case my rotor, only on that outer ring, then it will be free to turn, and it will turn freely with all of the weight taken on the ball bearings in between. Now, that's not a brilliant way of doing it if you can add 100 kilos or so. But given the weight of the whirly bird, it actually works just fine. And if you bother to take one of those whirly birds apart, you'll see that this is pretty much the standard way of doing it. So all we have to do is create a disc with a 22mm diameter hole in it so that that will fit in there. In the head of the whirly bird, we need to drill a hole that is slightly bigger than that outer ring there so that this won't rest on the plate, only that rests on the plate. So 12mm will be fine, which will take it to there. Then we can rest the whirly bird on there and fasten it to the larger ring that we made. Right, I'll get on with that and then show you it. So that's it in place. Now the outer edge of the bearing is resting on the plastic and the inner edge of the bearing is resting on the centre pole. And there's the centre pole which is a bit of steel going right the way through to the bottom bearing and the bottom bearing is just held in the centre by stays. I mean you could use another ring, a larger ring if you want. I just happen to have stays so I put stays in there. And there it is finished. Now, um, we have had Storm Bella, and Storm Bella is gone, so it's really quiet at the moment. So I'm going to turn a hairdryer in a, on it in a moment, we can watch it spin. Now, a hairdryer doesn't give a lot, that's, that's certainly for sure, and it'd be better if we got it outside. But we know these designs will spin in the wind, really. I mean, it's very little more than a whirly gig, but let's put a hairdryer on it anyway. That really is quite awesome, hey? And you can see how little resistance there is by how long it's spinning after I've taken the hairdryer off. Now obviously what we need to do is put the magnets on the bottom here with the coils underneath it. But I thought I would do something on how to make a rotor because I saw that tumble dryer and I thought that's just an awesome thing. Obviously it'd be better if we put little fins, uh, little airfoils on here and all we did was bend them out. But still, we're getting a good result from that and it would be good to get that in some real wind. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.